So right now we're up at what I call Red Toolhouse 2. Got to come up with another name for it. But it's our two-acre off-grid camp up in the mountains of West Virginia, hanging out here for the weekend, doing some work, enjoying the recreation, kind of getting something in before snow starts blowing up here. But a lot of you have asked uh, about updates on the camp, and specifically the vermicomposting toilet. How's it holding up? How's the shower? How's that outdoor setup going? So, so I want today's video to be about detailing that and, and getting people up to speed as to how this has been working out so far. So you can see behind me here, what's built on stilts is our building. That is a four by eight building that we use for storage and of course has a flushable toilet in it. And then has a small deck that goes around and the tarps, that's our shower area. That's where we can take an outdoor shower using, using a solar bag that we let the sun heat up and also cheat with heating water up on the campfire, of course, and then just pouring it straight into the bag. Behind me here, though, you see that is our collection tank. And I'm not going to go into the details of exactly how it works because we did some videos on it from last year. So I'll just link to those here. But I want to get them an update. It's been a year, literally, since we've come up and used it. Did our red wiggler survive? Is the tank still working? So the system works best, of course, when the tank is covered and in the shade and, and, and it's dark. That's when the red wigglers really do their thing. And last year we didn't. We ran out of time before we got to put our, our lid on our tank. That's actually what we're going to work on today. We'll document. But I kept a tarp on this just to make it more shady. So if I pull our tarp back, if there's anything nasty, I'll leave that part out. So what's crazy is last year, we're looking down in the tank now, last year we put a, um, a bunch of kitchen scraps, vegetable scraps, uh, even what you see there is uh, an ice cream carton that we tossed in here knowing that the red wigglers would uh, chew all that up. And it's just amazing how, uh, how much that's decayed and broken down. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera, but the red wigglers are rocking in there. I, I see them there moving a little slow because it's pretty brisk this morning. But uh, they are really, you're really not supposed to be doing this. It kind of kills a little bit of ecosystem la layer they've got going on there. But there's, um, there's definitely some red wigglers in there. I'm, I can see quite a few just in this uh, spot that I've scratched. Here's one now on the side of the tank. <laughs> Just fell in there. So one thing I need to do, and probably will do that hopefully before snow starts blowing, is come in and fill this up more. As you can see, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, the IBC tote is less than half full of our wood chips and our breakdown or compost there. Some of that sphagnum uh, peat, peat moss, that type of stuff. So I should put probably another foot layer of wood chips in here to really give them some places to hang out, protect them from super freezing temperatures and keep them alive. It was a full calendar year since we've been up here last and utilized it and put anything in it. So um, I use the term to deposit. We haven't deposited anything in it for a year and the red wigglers are still kicking, doing what they need to do, you know, breeding, growing, eating, all that type of stuff. So they're really turning this into some incredible compost. Now there's a lot of, still a lot of debate and discussion over whether humanure compost can be used in gardens and around vegetables and all that type of stuff. And a lot of rules of that are changing or recommendations are changing to say it's not as bad as they originally thought when it came to pathogen load. I'm not a big fan of putting around anything that I'm going to eat. Uh, but if I had a, now if I had a fruit tree or something up here at camp, I would definitely pack it around that and not worry about that contaminating the fruit on the tree. So by adding the roof, of course, we'll keep the weather out, keep it from getting too much water in. Uh, we think the moisture will hold on good enough to keep the red wigglers moist and, and uh, thriving until we come back up here next spring and start using it again. But the biggest thing is it's going to keep the light out. And I think once we get it nice and dark and have that material in there, then they should just become even more prolific. You know, the crazy thing is, again, making sure I didn't show it in the video, made sure it was okay, but we've already made some deposits uh, since we've been up here, and it just amazes me, there's, there's zero odor. You know, if this was an outhouse, if this was a porta john and you crack the lid on the tank to check on something, you're gonna get a whiff of either strong chemical or you're gonna get a whiff of, of human manure. 
and there's absolutely no odor whatsoever. So I really like this system. It works incredibly well. The real test, of course, would be testing it on a daily usage. Uh, since we only come up here for vacation stints or just times to hang out, there's times that we have as many as 10 people using this facility over the course of multiple days and still does well. It doesn't overtax the system that we get an odor. But then, of course, we're gone for quite a bit of time, maybe months in between. So it allows it to reset. The real test would be if I was using this daily, if, if the four of us were using this daily, how would it reset? How would it handle that load? And that's where I think, of course, again, having deeper carbon material in there would help. So for those of you that haven't seen it, we'll do a little quick little tour of, here's a tour of our bathroom. How exciting is that? We're actually doing some additional work right now. Turn the light on here. Oh. Again, real flushing toilet. Fills from rain catchment. You can see the line coming through behind there. Fills from rain catchment off this little 4x8 roof. And then over here, of course, is just additional storage we have for accoutrements. We, interesting story. We, of course, in the wintertime, we had to drain the toilet to get every bit of water out of it, out of the tank and out of the bowl. So it's completely dry to be... Um, so it wouldn't bust over the winter when it would freeze. We came up and the mice had just declared this their home. There was a mouse nest in the bowl. There was one in the tank underneath the flapper. And I had to, even had baby mice in it. So I had to displace them and get it all cleaned up and clean the mice nest out of everything. Same here on this side. All of our stuff that was packed loose had mice on it. So we went to the store and got some totes. And we're storing everything in totes now that could become mouse habitat. So as you come out the door and come around the corner, we have our outdoor shower. So this is the actual shower stall. So there's our, our solar bag that we used last night, all five of us. Kelly didn't come with us on this trip, but my folks are here. So five of us used this shower system yesterday evening after dark. Worked quite well. That's why the tarps are up. But I'm working right now on ooh, spin around real quick. Working right now on setting additional posts. So I've got this 4x4 from the mill that I had here. And we're going to add some extensions to these treated posts with 4x4. And the same with this one where the soap is sitting. And it's going to allow me to put a metal roof. So we're going to do a metal roof coming back this way. Spin around. Coming this way. And uh, you can see the notch I created for one of my rafters to sit. And then there'll be a rafter on this side, and we'll have the metal roof coming down. And that will allow us to have cover, because when it rains and you're here taking a shower, it's not a big deal to get wet from the rain in a shower, but it's a big deal when you've got your clothes, your changing clothes and your towel and everything here. You don't want that to get wet. So we're going to put that in there, and then I'll come back and put some uh, privacy boards up so we don't have to use tarps. It looks a little, um, looks a little West Virginia with all the tarps on it and then um, probably make a little saloon style door right here on the corner because you can see if you're standing here getting dressed that's where our campfire is so if somebody wants to take a peek back then get an eyeful so we'll put a saloon door here something like that that would be privacy like you'd see at a national park or state park type of thing
actually fit. <laughs> Said it actually measured right and fit. Like I knew what I was doing. Looks good. For the first time in your What you call it? <coughs> If it's square, does that mean it's running? Yeah. Should be counting numbers up too. Oh, okay. Farther out to the end, you get the less load you have. Wait a second, we'll get the board. Yeah. Get the board. We'll step over that. Okay, okay. start it to you. Ah. Yeah, you're doing good. Okay, so the boys and I are back here at the farm at Red Tool House. Uh, so we had a great weekend, really enjoyed time with my folks. Hated the fact that Kelly wasn't there, but uh, she seemed to have a good time while we were gone. So that worked out well for her as well. So as you saw in the video, we were able to put the cover on the tank and get all that kind of wrapped up for the winter. Uh, we also put an additional metal roof cover over top of our outdoor shower because nobody likes to get rain on them when they're in the shower, of course. Uh, so that was a nice touch. There are really two main takeaways from this vermicomposting system. The fact that an entire year, a full 365 days almost to the, to the date, was the last time we were up there. And I was really worried that the lack of use would be the bigger issue than overuse for our situation. So it was exciting to see when, uh, when I went there with the rake and kind of raked back some of the, um, some of the wood chips in the tank to see those uh, red wigglers, to see them thrive and see them in there doing what they need to do. So that was really exciting. Number two, pardon the pun, was the fact that even after being up there for the weekend, uh, the boys and I used it. Um, my folks have their camper, so they, they use their bathroom in their camper. But so the boys and I used that over the weekend. And the very last thing before we left, I wanted to throw some old cardboard in there, again, just to give the, the worms some additional uh, nutrients, some sources there that they could get into and do their thing. And just surprised, you know, actually, you know, not to sound gross, but you're feeding cardboard into that tank. You know, my face is, is three feet from the surface of where our waste goes. Just no odor. Absolutely no odor. It just, it just kind of smells like a musty forest that you, you know, the smell you get when you walk through the woods here after rain. And just, just amazed how that really keeps the odor down. 
So I'm really anxious to implement something like that here at Red Tool House. Obviously, it won't supersede what we do at the house, but when we have guests, when we have parties and stuff, things we want to do back at the retreat when we get that going full force, it'll be really neat to have one of those systems in place and see how it gets, uh, when it's used more frequently, see how it holds up. We'll be sure to document as we go along. Kelly and I may be back up at camp here in the next month or so. Uh, if that's the case, we'll document uh, anything we've got going on up there. And I'll post below the link to the website where I got my information and my plans to put together our vermicomposting toilet. I've linked to it in our previous videos discussing this setup, uh, but I'll share those again. All right, well, I hope everyone has a good week. Take care. Well, this is highly unprofessional, but I keep forgetting to add into our videos the announcement for the last Olight winner. So I'm doing that right now while I'm editing. So congratulations to Marquette B of New Jersey. Um, he was the winner of our flashlight. So I'm gonna reach out. If I don't hear back from Marquette within two weeks, then we'll have to choose another. Uh, but uh, congratulations to Marquette and thanks everyone for being on the e-newsletter. Again, if you wanna be, um, automatically registered for any of our drawings, just uh, go to our website, sign up for our newsletter, and that'll put you in the running. Oh, oh gosh, I didn't mean that. I thought you were to turn it off before doing that. Anybody know a big tail? Well, yeah. This is James. He's coming up to the valley now. I think that's... Yeah, that's where that cool is. <laughs>